Dear reader, my name is Tony and this is Book Text. Today I have for you my very first book haul on Booktube. I'm quite excited. Um, I do a lot of secondhand book shopping. Last year I actually had the goal to have a thousand books on my shelves and I was like 40 books shy or something and I thought the cheapest way to do that is to find them secondhand. And so I spent kind of the whole year scouring different secondhand bookstores in my area. And there, there are quite a few of them. There's a lot of thrift stores actually that aren't even bookstores per se, but they carry a lot of, of books in them. And they're, those are really inexpensive, but they're not organized at all. Uh, so I ended up meeting my goal really easily and I've continued my secondhand book shopping and it has become maybe a bit of a problem as you will see from my uh, pile. So, in no particular order, I will be showing you my secondhand thrift store book haul. So the first book is a classic children's book. This is The Bad Beginning. It's the first book in the Lemony Snicket series of unfortunate events. And I do quite a bit of babysitting and I love being the book dealer. So I supply these children with books um, there's an eight-year-old that I babysit who loves to read. And so this, I got this with, with her in mind. I've, I've read it already, um, but I would love to read it with her. The second book I got, uh, along similar uh, vein of thought, was um, San Domingo. This is by Marguerite Henry. It is kind of an older children's book. She, Marguerite Henry wrote a lot of books about horses, Misty of Shinkatigue, King of the Wind, and I, and I gobbled those up um, when I was younger. I had an obsession with horse books, well, animal, animal books really, but, but horse books specifically. And um, the girl I babysit loves them too. And so she's been also reading through my Margaret Henry books and I bought San Domingo for her. Uh, the next book I bought because I was intrigued by the title and then by the kind of cheesy 1985 cover. And then I discovered just the other day that this book is actually from 1942. So it kind of fits in with my uh, desire, my goal to read a lot of early 20th century uh, women writers. And, and it's also a mystery. So this is uh, Mary Roberts Reinhardt's uh, the Haunted Lady, and I love the description on the back of this book. It's a Miss Pinkerton mystery, by the way. Now, I, I've never read a Miss Pinkerton, but I have heard about them. Uh, this is what the back says. Wealthy Eliza Fairbanks may have been old and delicate, but she was hardly senile. So when she claimed to have found bats in her bedroom and arsenic on her strawberries, Miss Pinkerton was promptly assigned to the case. The shrewd nurse detective watched over Mrs. Fairbanks, but apparently... Someone else was watching even more carefully, for soon the old lady's worries were over, and unfortunately so was her life. Oh, I just love that kind of uh, wordplay. So I'm, I'm excited to, to read my first Miss Pinkerton. I also found this um, copy of Cynthia Voigt's uh, Come a Stranger, and I, I really enjoyed Cynthia Voigt's writings. I, I read a lot of them in middle school, so I feel like they're kind of middle grade reads, but they're, they're quite deep, they're heavy, they've got serious subject matter. And this book is in particular about um, a girl who experiences uh, racism at dance camp and kind of realizes she has to face her feelings about being black. And it seems a little different from Cynthia Voigt's other, other works, and so I'm, uh, I'm excited to, to, to try out that one. I'd never heard of it before. The, the wonderful things that you could kind of find in a, in a thrift store. Uh, my next book is a classic. It is one of the beautiful penguin kind of, uh, I don't know what color you want to call this, light green, sea green spines. Um, this is Primo Levi's If Not Now, When. And I have never heard of this, but it's, it's a World War II book and I love uh, that that era, reading about that era, I, I mean, is, is kind of saturated, right? That, that genre is pretty saturated, but I still enjoy it. Um, and I, I'm planning to do a video on, on my favorites later. But this is about 
a, a band of Jewish rebels and what they do to uh, wage their personal war of revenge against the Nazis, which is a kind of a story that I've never read about in, in that uh, genre. So I'm, I'm excited to try something new. I got several classics. Best place to find classics is, is the, uh, the thrift stores. There's actually, because there's two universities in this area within like 10 minutes of each other, we get a lot of classics in the, the thrift stores because of, of former students and, and other intellectuals. So I found this copy of Anthony Trollope's The Warden. It, it appears to be some sort of Barnes and Noble copy. It doesn't quite look like the other, it kind of looks like the other Barnes and Noble books. Um, but I'm trying to read, I haven't started, but I'm going to uh, have the goal, right, of reading through Anthony Trollope's Barsetshire series because I really want to read Angela Thurkle's Barsetshire series and I feel like I need a little bit of context and background before before I tackle that. So reading through Chop with the goal of eventually reading Thurkle. Another classic I found was Henry James's The Golden Bowl. Um, I have read quite a bit from Henry James especially uh, as an English major in college um, and I, I enjoy it I, I but I had not heard of this one and I, I'm collecting sort of these um, different kind of penguin spine, uh, but I've got I've got a, a shelf of them, and uh, this this book seems right along the lines of, of all the other um, Henry James Henry James novels. So I'm I'm going to enjoy another classic, another Victorian era book. This classic is entirely new to me. It is called The Tattered Cloak and Other Stories, and is by Nina Berberova. It is a Russian classic and from the 1930s and 40s. So first of all, it's an early 20th century woman writer. Second of all, it's from a country that I've not read any early 20th century women writing from. So it's going to meet a lot of, of kind of goals, help me to diversify um, my my reading. I, I have been collecting also uh, some murder mystery series because I need some escapes to read when I'm kind of bogged down with grading or, or the other busyness, you know, of, of life. So I have been collecting Alexander McCall Smith's books, and I actually haven't started reading them yet because I'm trying to finish a couple of other mystery series. But this is uh, a Professor Dr. Von Eaglefeld series, a book called Portuguese Irregular Verbs, and just sounds charming. Also, it's a short read. Oh, I love short reads. Because I can, I can, I feel like I'm making progress. Okay, this book uh, appears to be historical fiction, and I was first attracted by the title on the shelf. It is by Julian Barnes, and it is called Arthur and George. And I, so I pulled it off the shelf, and what I saw was this beautiful cover, and realized that I was looking at maybe Victorian era England. And as I was reading the back, I realized the Arthur in Arthur and George is probably Arthur Conan Doyle. So oh, I get to read about a writer. I, I, there's something really charming about books about books or books about writers. And so I'm looking forward to reading about that. Speaking of books about books, I got my own copy of The Thirteenth Tale by Dan Setterfield. I have read this book, but I have uh, not owned a copy. Um, I, I remember enjoying it. It was kind of I thought it was kind of strange. It was my first Diane Setterfield with most people. It was. And um, my best friend did not like it. And so uh, I'm not going to tell her that I bought a copy of it. Oh, this next book is so embarrassing. You're going you're gonna to learn something really quickly about my nerdiness. But this is Star Trek Voyager Presents Captain Proton. <sighs> Star Trek Voyager is my favorite of the Star Trek series. There was just something really compelling about this group of people being so far away from home that they're essentially lost right on the far side of the galaxy and that they're they're trying to survive and have a quality um, experience as they're trekking back home. Um, so oh, it's just like some really good stories came out of that that show. Oh, some weird ones. I mean, it's, it's got some it's Star Trek. But um, one of my favorite characters, Tom Paris, really enjoys playing through this kind of Captain Proton series, supposed to be like a vintage a vintage uh, comic book series on the holodeck. And so I think this is kind of a, a Captain Proton adventure. I'll add that to my slowly growing Star Trek Voyager stack. This 
next book is a coffee table book. It is called The Sweet Life, and it is Reflections on Home and Garden by Laura Stoddard. And it, it seems to just be quotes about home and garden, which I, I have a goal of improving my garden this year. I, I grew some tomatoes last year and the year before and really enjoyed it. Um, so I would like to do a little bit more, but mostly I got this book because of the charming artwork. And they're described, Laura Strader's art is described as exquisite tiny drawings. And I think that's exactly what they are. They are just adorable. And so I, I thought this would be something that I could, it would just make me feel so good, right, about, about life. So I got a little art book for myself. And I got a second little art book, which is called The Impressionists, and it is by um, Antonia Cunningham. And it's just a little kind of in information book about impressionist artists, impressionist paintings, you know, kind of, it, it'll highlight a painting and then uh, give you some information about it. And oh, I love impressionist art. It, you see it a lot in like the covers of classic novels. And so I thought I would like to learn a little bit more about the, the art behind the novel. But uh, oh, just so, so good, so pretty. So I, I will be educating myself on Impressionist art. And this next book I got for my dad because it's the novelization of a movie that we loved watching when I was little and, and probably when he was little too. It's from the 60s, it's a Western, it's a comedy. It is Support Your Local Sheriff. Um, this is by Philip Ketchum, based on a screenplay by William Bowers. Um, my dad is not a big reader, but I think he might enjoy reading this. It's short, it's not intimidating. Oh, it's just kind of got, got like that lovely like stain on the edge of the, uh, the, the dye on the edge of the, of the pages. You don't see that a lot uh, in these old books, but oh, so I, I'm going to give this to my dad. Shh, don't tell him. Then I found another uh, book related to a movie. This is The Bookshop by Pen Penelope Fitzgerald, and it is the story of a woman who starts a bookshop in a small English town and kind of encounters the, the various uh, unique characters of the town as, as she's trying to build this business and build relationships, build a community, really. And I have not seen the movie, but I would like to, maybe after reading this book, if I enjoy it, it's another short book. I just love some short books on my on my TBR. Great, I don't know how to pronounce the, the title of this next book, but it is Robert Louis Stevenson's The Master of Ballantry, I'm gonna say. And it it's I know I'm trying to read a lot of Victorian literature. Um, I'm trying to make sure that I have enough on my shelves for every Victober and uh, this is it says that it's supposed to be a tragedy and a drama and it's set in Scotland. I'm there. I love that. The next book is a different kind of classic. This is a Newbery Honor from, I'm going to guess the 90s. Oh, I was way off. 1978. It is The Great Gilly Hopkins by Katherine Patterson. I have never read this, but again, I do a lot of babysitting. I would like to have things to read with the kids that I babysit. And I love a good, a good sassy character. And if that's not a sassy pose, I don't know what is. So I am looking forward. I've heard a lot of good things about this book. I'm looking forward to reading it now that it's on my shelf and it's easy to access. I also found Agatha Christie short stories, Miss Marple complete short stories. I have read this in the audiobook form, um, but I did not own it. I am trying to complete my Agatha Christie collection very slowly. It's quite expensive to, to work on, um, but what a great, what a great addition. A nice, a nice uh, cover, a nice version. Has seen a little wear and tear, maybe some children or a dog or something, but, but it's okay, I can still read it. These last books are just heartwarming books. I really enjoyed Jan Karen's Father Tim books. Um, I, I got them because they were floppy and they were really easy to perch on the elliptical at the rec center while I was, so I could read while I was uh, working out. Um, and then I just fell in love with them. I loved all the characters. Father Tim was, was a, a charming delight. Um, the people that he, I mean, in his small town, it's just, 
you want to live in Mitford. And they, these books seem to be along a similar vein. They are Charlene M. and Bomb Bitches, uh, Dearest Dorothy books. And it seems to be along a similar vein as, as the Mitford books, Father Tim books. Um, so I have books one, two, and five. Dearest Dorothy, are we there yet? Uh, Dearest Dorothy, slow down, you're wearing us out. And Dearest Dorothy, Mary Everything this appears to be like a Christmas book. And from what I can tell, Dorothy, the, the kind of titular character, is <laughs> she's described as an irrepressible octogenarian and the spunkiest lady in town. Like I said, I love a sassy main character. Um, and, and I love books that are just heartwarming, that make you feel like you want to live in the book. Um, they're, they're kind of good escapes for me. Today's word of the day is recrudescent, which means renewing or breaking out again. It's, it's like an upsurge after uh, something has abated a little bit and it returns. So I, I dare you to use the word recrudescent today in some way. So that was my book haul. And it was a total of 22 books, which I purchased for $30 at the most. And I, I feel pretty good about that. Again, it's an inexpensive way to educate yourself. So I, I'm looking forward to reading through all of these. If any of these books intrigued you, or if you have read them and, and have some comments on them, I would love to hear about it. Remember, there is always another book.